Hello and welcome to another episode of What Bike Next. So I, Michael Mann, go head to head with this fine gentleman, Simon Hargreaves, as we try and find a Bike Social member, their very next bike. And you never know, we could be doing the same for you. As always, we start by offering our eternal thanks to our sponsors, Pirelli Motorcycle Tires, but also we welcome our new sponsor, Zero Fit, who make base layers as modeled by Simon and also this charming hoodie. So thank you to them both. You join us at the Milton Keynes branch of the Superbike Factory for the first time. We're at episode eight, aren't we now? Mm. And our aim is, of course, to find a bike social member, their very next bike. And joining us today is that bike social member, is Ben Smith. Hi, Ben. Hi, Hi. Ben. How are you? I'm well, thank you, yeah. Good, thanks so much for joining us. Uh, let's start by finding out a bit about you. So tell me about you. Ooh, what would you like to know? What do you do for a living? What I do for a living is that I'm an accountant, don't judge me. <laughs> and how old are you? I'm 41. And tell us a bit about your biking background. I've only had my license since 2019. I always wanted a bike and I don't know whether it was a midlife crisis or whether I was just waiting for 25 years, but I eventually learned then, I suppose I was in my, in my late 30s, and I love it. It's, it's my principal hobby, it's great. It makes you feel alive and happy to be on the earth, so. So it's a lot to take in then, in those sort of what, four years, you've, yeah, you've kind so. of welcomed to the world of motorcycling. Yes, exactly, you go, going from reading about it and watching videos to actually doing it, it's a different thing. It's the greatest club in the world. It is. It, really? What are you riding at the moment? So at the moment I have a G6R 750, which I've only had for mm, around six weeks and which I love, but which is not the most practical of bikes. Uh, so I'm looking to supplement it with another one. What do you use your GSX-R for? So I use it for riding around near my house, doing things that I shouldn't be doing, um, <laughs> going to Sainsbury's and buying milk, but <laughs> an excuse. A long way around <laughs> yeah. to do it. Yeah, Something yeah, like yeah, that, yeah. yeah. And what are you looking for? What, how can we help you? Well, what I'm looking for is a commuter bike. I'm going to be starting a new job in around a month and a half. Found myself going around in circles, trying to think about uh, what I needed. I live in Oxfordshire and I have a motorway commute followed by filtering in London. And have you got any parameters for what you're looking at? Is there a, a capacity, any particular style of bike, any sort of number of cylinders? So I tend to prefer big bikes, which, well, may or may not be sensible, but I, I like big bikes. In terms of cylinders, love the sound of twins, love the sound of inline fours. I've had a few triples, which I bought just because they were the most rational bikes to buy at the time, but I don't really love triples. I've probably had five or 10 bikes. I'm extremely indecisive, wow. which is why I'm hoping that you'll be able to help me. And what style of bike? Is there anything that you do want and anything specifically that you don't want? I think I tend to like fairings. I don't tend to like the looks of adventure bikes. I like sports bikes, but they're not very comfortable. If you're looking for something that's purely a commuter, but you've got, you've got motorway and filtering for us to think about, haven't that's you? That's right, yeah. You know, you can have a lovely, you have a pan-European or something on the motorway, which would be great, but it may be too wide and heavy to filter. So there's a real compromise you want. You want a bit of motorway comfort and a bit of commuting urban manoeuvrability. Well, one of the key questions is, what's your, what's your budget? So my budget is, um, well, if I'm talking to my partner, it's <laughs> 3,000 pounds. If I'm talking to you and the open internet, it's 5,000 pounds. We won't tell, we won't tell. No, I'm sure no one safe. Yeah. <laughs> You can always stretch budget, can't you? You know, if you find the bike you love, you can always just go a little bit more, perhaps. <laughs> well, look, I think, I don't know, I, I think I've got enough info for now. How about you? Yeah, I think I've got it. I want a big bike that's good in, mo good on motorways and good in town. I don't think such a thing exists. Okay, all right. It's a challenge, but we can find something. We'll do our best for you, Ben. Okay, yep. You go and sit tight, uh, grab yourself a coffee, and we'll have a mooch about. Super. Right, let's see if we can find Ben his next bike. Ben's going to test ride three bikes we think might suit him best. One chosen by me, one chosen by Simon, and then a third wildcard bike chosen by Superbike Factory's sales expert, Sam Jukes. Then at the end, we're going to find out which bike Ben prefers, and hopefully we'll have answered his question. What bike next? 
Ben will be testing our three bike choices on our What Bike Next test route. On an hour long loop taking in the Buckinghamshire roads, a mixture of A's, B's, in town and out, there'll be plenty of riding for Ben to get a feel for his next bike. So I think one good option uh, for Ben would be from BMW's range, this F800 GS or even a GT. There's not a particularly good example of a GT here. Uh, I'm not quite sure if this is a uh, factory fitted optional extra post-it note, but this particular example is out of his budget, but it gives me an idea of what he might like. Now moving on, just down here, we've got the Triumph Tiger Sport 1050. Fantastic bike. It, it honestly, it's perfect for what he needs. It's got a great engine, really sprightly, got the weather protection, ideal for cruising. It's narrow. It's out of his budget though. It's just that bit too far. If you could stretch, this is an ideal bike. Looking at Brent's criteria, especially the commuter aspect of it, so he wants, and I'm guessing it's all year round, they don't come much more commutery than Honda's CBF 1000. I mean, it's not the most exciting bike in the world, and this particular example is not the prettiest, which is reflected in its price, which is 2,800. But my goodness, it's an old Fireblade engine. It still can be fun to ride, and it's got the fairing, and it's got heated grips on this one, and it's got the panniers, and it's got the top box. These things were built to commute through winter. But I don't know, 2,800 is so under budget, I'm not sure if it's a bit not quite cool enough for Ben. Ben, I've scoured Superbike Factory's forecourt, uh, and here is what I think is going to be ideal for you. Okay. So, it blatantly isn't a scooter. So, we, uh, do you want to help me get the covers off? And we'll have a look. Off, yeah. We'll have a look what I've got. Bike number one, please. There we go. I'll tuck that away. Okay. And you Straight can. Straight into it. Yeah. Ooh and ah. I can. We have a KTM 1050 Adventure. Cool. You talked about big bikes, you talked about V-twins. Yeah. Uh, it's narrow. It's just over five and a half thousand pounds. So it's a little over budget, but I'm sure you can negotiate. What have we got? 19,000, just over 19,000 miles. 300 from new. Big tank, 23 litre tank. Yeah. It's got 94 horsepower, but there's loads of torque being a V-twin. So it's all, it's all off the bottom end, which is lovely. What are your first impressions, sir? I'm extremely excited. It looks great. Uh, never even considered one, so that's a good thing that I'm learning new things. Yeah, can't wait to, to ride it. Well, what, I think you said you, your first bike was a V-Storm 1000, so I thought... That's right, yeah. Sort of a better version. <laughs> <laughs> it's got a lot of tech on it as well. You know, traction control, ABS, oh, yeah, okay. rider modes, fly-by-wire. Um, so there's plenty of goodness in there as well. Do you want to go and ride it? I would very much like to go and ride it. Good. All right, you go get kitted up. We'll get it ready. Well, let's see if bike number one can win Ben over, or is the KTM's height a sticking point? Off Ben goes on the KTM, and I think he's going to get on really well with this. His brief seems fairly open, but he's also stipulated that he likes adventure bikes and V-twins. So, Exhibit A should be right up his street. Physically, it's big enough, and Ben seems really well suited to its size. Though, I think it'll also be ideal to, you know, weave through the city traffic when he nears work. The 1050 Adventure is the power and presence, and at just over five and a half grand offers really good value considering the rider aids, weather protection and comfort. Not to mention the fuel range and that grunty bottom end torque. It'll be interesting to see if the seed of doubt around reliability interferes with Ben's decision. And how was it in orange? How was it for you? It was great. I didn't notice the orange as I was riding, uh, so that's all good. No, I mean, it's a lovely bike, handles beautifully. The engine, I think, is great. It's got really nice throttle response. It was lovely winding throttle on in corners. You can just throw it around. Comfortable riding position. I think uh, the high standard over height might be a thing, you know, when you're sort of moving it around. 850 mil, isn't it? How tall? You're about six foot, are you? Just about, yeah. Centimetre under or something. <laughs> I must admit, you, you look quite comfortable when you were turning it round, paddling it about in the road. It wasn't like tiptoes, was it? It was manageable, but it's, it's something to take account of. We'll go into a bit more depth later on, but it's good to get your initial reaction. Yeah, no, I loved it. 
but I mean, all motorbikes are great. <laughs> it is a motorbike. I'm trying to work out whether I've got a high bar to clear here or whether 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 we've sold it already. Mm. But I think I think maybe should we go and have a look at uh, bike number two, bike number two, my please. bike, and see if you like that instead. Come on, let's see. But what if Ben doesn't want a KTM or an adventure bike? Shall we see what Simon's got as bike number two? So Ben, you've been out on bike number one. Well, let's have a look at bike number two. But before we do, oh. I've got a quick question. Bike number one was a little bit over budget. It was. It was, you noticed. I did notice, okay. yes. <laughs> this might be a little bit more over budget. Oh, right. But I think you're gonna find it's worth it. Should we get the covers off? Let's do it. Ta-da! Blimey. Oh, ah. that was a serious face then. That is a serious face. It's red and it's a Honda. Honda VFR 800F, 2017 model, so it's the latest model. Yeah. It's got 18,000 miles on it. This one is teeny bit over budget. It's pushing it. Go on. <laughs> well, let's go through the spec Can't first. Can't keep it secret. I mean... It's 105 horsepower, so it's more than 100, which is what you were, one of your stipulations. Yep. Obviously, it's Honda. It's absolutely bulletproof, which was another stipulation. Mm -hmm. Comfortable, okay. long legged, durable. I mean, you know, you talked about wanting a commute, sort of a commuter and a motorway bike. I yeah. mean, this is the ultimate all rounder, or at least it used to be. And it's mm. clean, really, really clean. It's a good example. Price wise, we're talking about 5.9, they're asking. But, okay. but there's always a negotiation. Now, what do you think? I think it's the thing of beauty. <laughs> um, I think that uh, the V4 is. Also beautiful. I imagine if we change the exhaust, it will sound kind of thunderous. I think it's great. Uh, my only, the only sort of worry that pops into my mind is overlap with my existing bike, the GSX-R. Obviously this is different, but it's also a kind of sporty thing. But, um, but it looks great and I'm excited. It was on your list of, re of It was uh, on my options. list, yes. <laughs> well, you never know, you might end up selling the GSX-R. Ah, uh, well, that's, that's the danger, isn't it? <laughs> no, it's not a danger for me. No, <laughs> perhaps in my wallet. I mean, I can always remortgage the house if I need more money. Absolutely, so. there you go, you see. Well, let's go for a ride and see if you can fall in love with it enough to break your budget. Yeah, let's go. Well, let's see if bike number two is the one for Ben or is that VFR too similar to his Suzuki? Well, you can't say we don't give people what they want here at What Bike Next. Not only does the VFR meet almost all of Ben's criteria, he even actually said it's one of the bikes he's considering. Now, there are VFR 800s and there are VFR 800s. We could have gone backwards in time to the late 1990s and picked a, a VFR 800 FI with, if you squint, the heart of an RC45. Or we could have entered the noughties with a VTEC, which is still a seriously plush piece of kit if you can live with what some say is the slightly Jekyll and Hyde nature of the VTEC power delivery. And there are other VFRs, there's the 160 horsepower Shaft Drive 1200, that's a consideration, amazing piece of kit, around about Ben's price. But this is the last ever VFR 800, and seeing as Ben himself suggested it, I'd say it's a pretty good fit. It's a bit sportier than the VTEC it superseded, with a slightly pitched forward riding position, but Ben's a young chap and he looks flexible and he'd need to be because the price is a bit over his budget. But the VFR has rudimentary traction control and this bike also has factory heated grips and it's a Honda V4, smooth, effortless mid-range, soulful whale from the exhaust, lots of luggage options and the motor simply never goes wrong. And this is a really clean example. Blimey, I'm even selling it to myself. Ben's got to love it. So Ben, the mighty VFR, the Honda, <laughs> which is going to win. It's going to clean up. Is it? Yeah. How do you feel about it? Uh, I loved it. I mean, <laughs> I, I, as I said before, I, I love all motorbikes. And no, the VFR was great. I felt immediately comfortable, happy kind of throwing it around. Sounds ah, lovely. It's yeah. a beautiful machine. Not quite sure about the riding position and sort of comfort over, you know, in comparison with the adventure bike. But yeah. it was beautiful. Great to ride. You don't find it too analogue, do you? 
analog. It is quite analog. That's that's well observed. It does feel like it's come from the 1990s, and it's quite heavy. <laughs> if we want to find negatives, kind of has, hasn't it? <laughs> Late 90s. Does HRC, by the way, does that make it faster? It must do. <laughs> You're riding Swachiro Honda's brain. That's his soul in that engine. Ah. It's the most beautiful motorcycle engine ever constructed. But I know what you're saying. Yeah, I'm not going to agree with you too much, but I know what you mean about the riding position. It is it is a, a sports sports tourer. It Sorry. wasn't that different from my G6R, no. um, which is a soft sports bike in yeah. terms of position. But yeah, no, it's lovely though. Okay. All right then. Well, I guess we should have a look at the uh, the mystery bike. There is another choice. Yeah, so there's another bike. You're right, Si. Let's, okay. uh, should we toddle inside then and have a look at the, the third? Let's. It's time for bike number three, and this is the mystery bike. So let's go and find out what Superbike Factory sales expert Sam Jukes has got. Hi, yeah, my name's Sam Jukes. I work for Superbike Factory in Milton Keynes, and I'm the sales manager here. I've been here for seven months. So the bike I picked for Ben, it is a Japanese bike, which he said was important to him. It's good for reliability, uh, which again, it was one of the kind of remits he wanted. So the bike's a fantastic bike. It's got a brilliant engine in it. Uh, it's also got a, a nice pillion seat. Good for commuting, uh, filtering, and also can do a bit of green lining as well, which are all going to feature the colour as well. I think it really pops. Mystery bike time. So this is uh, bike number three, chosen by Sam. We don't know what it is. <laughs> Come on. It's like Christmas. Ooh. Oh, oh that's a cheat sheet, Simon. Racer. What is this? Okay. A tracer. Okay. How much is this? Wow. This can't be right. So tracer nine hundred. Not sure if it's a Tracer 9 G, Tracer 900 GT, but it's got the panniers. 2017 models, pretty recent. 5386. That sounds that's good. really cheap. So that's good. 21,000 miles, but it looks pretty clean. 21,000. That's really quite good condition. Mm -hmm. Three previous owners. 18 litre tank. Seat height weighing 113 brakes. So yeah, of course it's yeah. the it's the triple. It's the lusty Yamaha triple. CP3 yeah. engine, it's got an adjustable seat, doesn't it? That looks like it's in the lower position. It's got panniers which you can take off, but also it has got your upright riding position. It's got your f wind protection yeah. of sorts. It's light, it's agile, so it's good on the motorway and it's good in town. This is pretty good choice. This is Time, and what have we done? <laughs> Over to you. No, I agree, it's probably a good choice. Let's see. How do you feel about the bike itself? I actually, one of the many bikes I've had in my short time was an XSR 900 Yamaha, so which has the same engine. And it was great, but I'm not too keen on triples. You did say at the beginning about triples, didn't you? That I might have done, yes. Favorite thing. <laughs> yeah, but it could be a very rational choice. Um, agree with all those things. I'd probably junk these and have a top box on the back, which yeah. I assume is possible. But I think it's probably going to be a great bike. They're quite narrow. Yeah, they're quite slim. Right, yeah. should we um, should we take it for a spin on the test route? Yeah, see can't how you wait. Think? So grab your helmet. Right, let's see if Ben likes the inline triple of bike number three. So this is indeed a Tracer 900 with shad aftermarket panniers, and it is cleaner than a clean thing, wearing its three previous owners and 21,000 miles lightly. Who says modern bikes rot? Only if you don't clean them. And here's the thing, Ben has admitted to previously owning an XSR 900, which has the same 113 bhp CP3 inline triple as the Tracer, and he's admitted he wasn't the biggest fan of that motor. And there's nothing wrong with its power and torque, it's got plenty of both, but maybe it was the slightly aggressive nature of its throttle response. But Ben's face lit up when he saw the Yamaha, and I could see the cogs whirring. And it makes sense. It's light, agile, modern, with traction control. Although the Tracer 900 doesn't have cruise control or heated grips, but it's different enough from Ben's GSX-R without being an adventure bike. So has Superbike Factory Sam made a bit of a mistake here? Has he tripped up on a triple? Or is it third time lucky? So Ben, there we go, that was the mystery bike. The mystery bike, yeah. What do you think of the Tracer 900? I, I did really like it. I got lots of buffeting on my head, which wouldn't be so good for motorways and dual carriageways and things. Yeah. It's really great, fun handling bike, very snatchy throttle, really comfy position. It's again, sort of, I think quite nuanced. Did you try the different modes? Because it's A, B and standard, isn't it? Does that make any difference to I the I found throttle? it was snatchy and standard, unrideable in A, wow. and B was great, but it, I think it reduces the power. Yeah, so you want a combination of all three, really. If you could have full power with a nice smooth throttle. Ben mode. Ben mode. Well, actually, like the KTM, 
That had a very smooth throttle. Oh, so. did it? Oh, it did it? It did. I think you've just about summed the bike up. That's quite a good road test of it, really. Oh, I think go, yeah. just a really accurate summation of what everybody ever says about a, tr a Tracer 900. I'm interested to hear a lot more about your thoughts, but I, I, I think let's have a bit of a debrief, um, get your breath back, we'll grab a cup of tea. Oh, do you know what? Coffee would be nice. <laughs> ben, coffee? Yeah, let's go for it. Ben, three bikes, uh, three hours, three loops. Well, should we talk about the loop? Actually, how was the road ride? How was the route? It was varied, wasn't it? Had uh, bits of town riding, uh, plenty of roundabouts and Milton Keynes, had uh, some dual carriageway and some nice country lanes. Uh, you got a feel for what you're looking for though, in definitely. terms of your commute, because you've got a lot of dual carriageway and then you're filtering in a big city, correct? That's right, yeah. 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 Okay, see, we chose the route specifically because we knew you were going to be doing a bit of, a bit of dual carriageway and a bit Glad of Glad to hear it, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and a bit of bumpy country road. There were some big bumps out there. Yeah, the surface, you had to pick your line quite carefully you did, on some yes. of those corners, otherwise you'd come a cropper. Okay, well, I mean, if we start off with the KTM then, which was um, the first bike that we unveiled. Let's dig a little bit deeper into how you felt about it and whether it was a, whether it's a contender. For me, there's a learning curve getting used to the adventure bike position because I haven't ridden one since I had my V-Strom, mm -hmm. so it immediately felt strange. Um, I think the seat height, although manageable, I didn't feel that confident when we were sort of waddling around. So I'm thinking, how's it going to be turning in my gravel driveway, which is a bit bumpy. In terms of the actual riding, it was great. The throttle was really smooth, lots of control. The sound from the exhaust was great. You could throw it around with a degree of confidence. Um, I got a bit of buffeting from the screen, but that's probably adjustable and you could probably put a new screen on it. Um, so I think the KTM is, I mean, this is the thing. I think I'm going to say about all of them, I think it's a good bike. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's, okay. One thing I'm not sure about, sorry, is, is the reliability of KTMs. For me, it would be a commuter, so it needs to be reliable. It may be that it would be. I hear what you're saying, because it's, you know, it, it, that kind of uh, reputation does exist, um, if fairly or not. But this does come from a kind of an age before that reputation was formed, I think. And there is the adventure thing in general, you know, like maybe if it's not this specific bike, did that push you in the direction of, well, do you know what I really need as a, as a counterpoint to the G6R and adventure bike? I think that's true. It, it forms a nice contrast to yeah. the G6R. The riding position is really comfortable. It's got lots of things that are definitely in its favour. I don't massively like the looks of adventure bikes. I may have said that earlier. So and the KTM is quite a specific look in itself. In terms of its... Riding position, power delivery, uh, wind protection. Again, these are all the, the sort of the elements of your criteria that were were quite key, weren't they, for your particular yes. reasons for why you need this bike or why you're looking for this kind of bike. They they presumably the KTM ticks those boxes. Yeah, but it's one thing about the wind protection is um, so I had an FJR and an experience I had was taking the FJR in to be serviced sometime in January when it was cold and being given a V-Strom 650 as the, the lone bike. Uh, and it felt so cold riding on the V-Strom <laughs> compared to the FJR. So I think that that big fairing of a traditional sort of tour or sports tour really protects you from the elements. And I'm thinking about being on the motorway in the cold months of the year. I'm worried that an adventure bike won't pr provide quite the same protection of a you know traditional bike like the FJR. Um, Clearly, it's going to be more than a naked or something like that would be. And of course, the more you lezing and the more cycle lanes there are in central London, the, the less space there is for filtering. The cogs are whirring, aren't they? Shall we move on? Yeah. Let's talk Honda, shall we? Yeah, because, you know, the, it's the conventional sports tour in the old school style. It's slightly more sporty. Got on the Honda, it felt immediately like home. It was comfortable. The riding position, surprisingly similar, I think I mentioned earlier to my, my G6R. Yeah. I love the sound of it. Uh, I felt like I could throw it around with more confidence than the KTM, but that may just be my familiarity with the style of bike rather than something intrinsic. It felt heavy. I think the curb weight is similar to the KTM, but uh, you, you would think Honda with their mass centralization would have sorted that. No, it's a lovely bike. I could have, when, when I was riding the Honda, I was thinking I could imagine myself buying this Honda. Again, would it give you the, the, the right kind of comfort for distance? Yeah, that's one of the questions. I'm thinking about uh, 
commuting to work and riding for the best part of two hours and then having to do a full working day where I want to be my best. And a bike that balances fun. You know, you could have a sports bike and that would be great fun and you'd be exhilarated, but you'd be exhausted and wouldn't be able to work properly. I quite like the leaning forward riding position. I think it protects you from the wind a bit more than being bolt upright on an adventure bike. What would be the right riding position for you? I can't get it because your, your, your bars are too high, your bars are too low. I would like that, but the bars up about two inches and I would like a big vertical fairing <laughs> with no wind. Franz Alp, that's what you need. Yeah, yeah. And, and also, as you were saying, so it's a little bit too like the GSXR. In, 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 maybe to have them side by side in your garage? That's the question in my mind. Also, I mean, I'm not sure whether, I'm not sure whether I'd want to take a pillion and I don't know how the pillion accommodation compares. I mean, the seat's not bad. It should be tolerable. I mean, you know, it takes luggage easily enough. Like I say, it's got the clip on, you know, sort of if you yeah. can stick stretch to the Honda luggage and find any, it should just clip straight in. I owned a VFR 800 in a previous life with a top box on it and, and, and I used to commute with my then girlfriend uh, to and from work daily and it was A-OK, -okay, so. I'm pro VFR all of a sudden, that's not, hang on. I've got a VFR 750 and I haven't ridden it for 10 years. <laughs> OK, let's we move on then to the Tracer, which was a, a bit of a mystery, but then it turns out it's not that much of a mystery to you because you're familiar with the engine. Familiar with the engine, and it felt just like the one in the XSR that I had. Um, snatchy throttle, so powerful uh, down low. This was the only one when I opened the throttle that the front wheel starts lifting just, you know, without really wanting to lift the front wheel. Yeah. A little bit head shaky, therefore. It's an exciting bike to ride. I felt comfortable. I felt like I could throw it into corners with a little bit more ease than any of the others. The screen put put air directly onto my helmet though. That's the downside of the Tracer. They are quite divisive, those screens. Between the K Tracer and the KTM, that's a difficult decision. The Tracer was, had, I think, a lower standover height, so that's in its favour. The sound of the KTM though, it's yeah. beautiful. Yeah, the Tracer does have a, an adjustable seat, doesn't it? I think it's in its lowest setting today. The higher setting would be, I think as, as spec sheet goes, it's the same as the KTM. But of course, the Tracer is that happy medium, isn't it? We've talked about this riding position on the KTM, yeah. the Honda, and yeah. then all of a sudden the Tracer is almost the best of both worlds. Yeah. But it doesn't, in your words, have the, the, the most ideal engine. No, exactly, exactly. I mean, the, it, the exhaust sound is, it feels like something you know, trivial. It doesn't feel like a, a proper basis on which to choose a motorbike. <laughs> <laughs> However... No, if it's important to you, it's important to you. But equally, I think as you've proved for the last four years, with whatever bike you next buy doesn't have to be your long-termer, your, you know, your yeah, keeper. Yeah, yeah. I'm talking to the preachers of the converted here. Or a motorcycling magpie. Well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> sure, I've ever been called that before. Each bike I've bought, I thought, this is definitely the last time I'm changing. <laughs> and then three weeks later or something, I start reading magazines and websites. <laughs> is there anything that you would go back to from your past? I mean, the FGR was great. Um, so was my Triumph Sprint GT in a completely different way. You know, we, we, we've had a wonderful day's riding. The weather's been fantastic. It's been a great route. It's been really good riding with you. But I don't feel I'm any closer to understanding <laughs> what you, it is that you want and what you... I'm absolutely intrigued to find out what you end up with. I would imagine you've got quite a sizeable shortlist. <laughs> There's a yeah. few that I've seen here and, and, and that I've thought about before. How about you? Have you, have you got the, anything that... Yeah, yeah, there's been plenty that I've been looking around thinking, ah, you know, uh, uh, bikes that we looked at previously and we were thinking, oh, uh, that's the one, that's the one, that's the one, and then... Tiger Sport 1050 Ooh. is one. Mm. It might be a bit out of range budget-wise, but there's one here. There's F800 GT. Ah, the BMW. Yeah. Again, the list is endless, and I'm certain that our friends on YouTube will have all sorts of ideas. Well, I did think about a Honda Deauville, but I think that's... <laughs> is that the same as getting the train? <laughs> yeah, now you're really taking the mickey. <laughs> but, you know, it has a shaft drive. We haven't discussed that point, but a shaft drive is quite nice if you're riding through winter. You don't have to it back is. with chains. It is. I don't know, are we any closer to, to finding your next bike? Well, I think, you know, I have an emotion... Well, see, this is the thing. I, have, I fall in love with all the bikes. I think the Tracer was great, but I really like the sound of the VFR. If you had to take one of these three home right now, what would it be? You know, I was thinking about about the Tracer, but that snatchy throttle is quite annoying because I'd probably buy it and then chop it in six months down the line, wouldn't I? <laughs> <laughs> right, well, I think we've reached a, haven't reached a conclusion. No, we haven't. I don't think we're going to either. No, but we could be sitting here for a long, long time yet. We could be, yeah. Hopefully we've moved you on down the road a little bit in terms of, you know, what you're looking for.
At least I know now. That you don't want any of these three. <laughs> well, no, well, I was going to say that perhaps you've, you've found it as difficult to solve my problem as I have. So at least <laughs> that's some information. But even thinking, even having these conversations and thinking about it has probably given you a bit more of an insight into what you do and don't want. And, and even that option of selling the GSXR and getting something that that takes the pace of both. Ah, oh, but the GSXR is a thing of beauty. And the, hey, this is a conversation you can have the... inside your head. <laughs> yeah. It's not moving us on. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, Ben. It's been absolutely brilliant. It's a wonderful day's riding. I've really enjoyed it. Yeah, thanks. Thank you. Thanks for joining us. And uh, well, oh, good luck. Let us know how you get on. I will do. Thank you, Ben. Cheers. So that's a wrap for episode eight. And I think Ben might have gone home probably more confused than when he arrived first thing this morning. Um, again, hopefully we've given him some food for thought and it will be quite interesting uh, to find out where he goes from here and what he ends up with. Uh, although I'll put five pounds on the fact that whatever he chooses next won't be his, ne won't be his last bike. He'll be, on anyway, whatever. It'll be interesting to see where he goes with that. Um, just a bit of admin, look, I just want to say a massive thank you to everyone who likes these videos and who comments positively about these videos. It's great to hear what you're saying, what your thoughts are, because there'll be bikes that we've missed. Um, frankly, we are uh, slightly restricted with the bikes that are here. Uh, at Superbike Factory, but it's brilliant to hear. And I'm sure that Ben and every, every other candidate that's been a part of this What Bike Next process looked at the comments and thinks about, you know, how you guys are helping them as well. So thank you to you. Uh, thank you also to Pirelli uh, Motorcycle Tires. Uh, they are a, a fantastic sponsor. They've been so kind to us uh, since day one and we, um, Thank you very much for, for helping us out and make this program. And also to a, a new partner, Zero Fit, um, who make some really lovely base layers. And I'm really cooking in this hoodie. Uh, they've got a deal for you guys as well. So if you buy a base layer from Zero Fit from the website, you get a free neck warmer to go with it as well. Check out the details in the, well, there's a, there's a particular link in the comment section below. So yeah, feel free, comment uh, away, tell us your thoughts, tell us your questions, if you've got any queries. And of course, if you want to be part of this process, if you want to be a candidate on What Bike Next, you just got to be a Bike Social member, send me an email. It's enquiries at bikesocial.co.uk. And on that note, also, uh, don't forget to check out our Facebook group. It's Bennett's Bike Social. There's over, uh, there's over 2,000 people in there at the moment, and um, there's always a bit of banter going on and all sorts of interesting things. So yeah, don't be afraid to get involved with that either. Thank you again, and we'll see you on the next one. Guess what happened next? Yes, after we filmed this episode, Ben ended up buying that Yamaha Tracer 900 as chosen by Superbike Factory. As a result, our wonderful sponsor Pirelli will supply Ben with a new set of tires too. Happy riding, Ben. Mm. Yes, a man is bringing coffee. Put your left leg in, put your left leg out. In out, in out, shake it all the way out. When you're ready, I'm ready. Would you want to clap? Right, let's see what bike number three has for... <laughs> you don't do that. <laughs> I think we should get some sponsorship from Starbucks for this. Oh, he's got a poker face, isn't he, this one? Oh, right. <laughs> oh, he wasn't filming. Number three with the three cylinders. So I'll pretend and then we'll shoot it separately. Oh, I don't even know what I'm going to say. Oh, it's windy. Hello. Yeah. Windy, windy, Fly. windy pops. Did you say action? Oh, right. It sounds, it sounds like... like him with his pressure washer. Is it too noisy? <laughs> Hurrah! This is me, Mario. Look at me. I'm well good at it. I've been practicing. Okay, who's doing this? You doing it or Yeah, I'll do it. Oh, what's that do there? <laughs>